Hello guys, good morning. Um, happy Wednesday, we're halfway through the week. Yep, hump day, what up? All right, so I am going to talk today about some of the news. Um, there's not a ton of news, but I do wanna go through Governor Abbott's reopening plan as that goes into effect Friday, which is May 1st. Okay, so I wanna go over exactly like what that's gonna look like. Um, and then there are a couple of other you know, news stories, not that much, honestly. Um, it's been kind of a slow week, honestly. But um, I will update you on Abbott's plan right now. Okay, so Texas is reopening plan, like I said, May 1st. So his um, stay-at-home order is expiring April 30th. Okay, so that's the order that says, you know, only go out for essentials, um, stay at home for most things, don't, you know, go to work or whatever unless you're an essential worker. That is expiring on Thursday. He is not going to renew it, which means that we're going to start opening things up on Friday. Okay, so in regards to the things that are going to be opening up, we're looking at um, malls and retailers. Remember I said retailers is somebody who sells you something that's not food, basically. Um, so that's clothing stores, toy stores, you know, academy, places like that, okay? Um, so those places, so the malls and retailers can open and they're going to open at 25% capacity, which means there's a, um, certain number that every place can hold based on like how safe it would be if a fire broke out. Okay. And that's called like max capacity. And there's like a number, the fire department gives all of these stores a number. So they have to keep to 25% of that number. So, you know, only one fourth of that number is their capacity. Okay, so that's to keep, you know, people from bumping into each other and touching things. And then there's somebody right next to them that's also touching things. It just helps to keep the whole six feet apart social distancing thing up, even when you're going back. Okay, but you are encouraged to um, still do pickup, you know, like you can order from the retailer and they can bring it out to your car or you can go to a counter and pick it up and then leave um, instead of, you know, strolling through the store and touching everything. Um, so try to keep your hands to yourself. And um, people are still encouraged to wear masks if they are going out into public. Okay. Um, so food will also be, um, so food courts and play areas will be closed in malls, even though um, restaurants will be opening back up. Um, they're not going to open up the food courts in malls. Okay. Um, but they are going to, like I said, open back up restaurants for dine-in. Same thing, though, 25% capacity. So only a quarter of the people that can be in there or, like, would fit in there are going to be able to be in there. Okay? So if you're going to a restaurant, these are the new rules that you're going to see. You have to have less than six people in your party. Um, a party is just the people that, like, sit together at the restaurant. Um, so you have to have six people or less. So if you, you know, you have, like, an eight-person family... Sorry, you can't go to the restaurant. Or if you do, you're going to have to split into four and four. Um, they will sit people. Um, party or tables have to be six feet apart. Um, so they're probably going to end up taking out a lot of tables and then sitting people, you know, like every other booth um, or something like that. But they're going to keep tables six feet apart. You're going to see disposable um, utensils and menus and um, single serve condiments. Like if you ask for ketchup, they're not going to bring you a ketchup bottle. They're bringing like a bowl of ketchup um, or something like that. Okay. And this is all um, to keep, you know, the crossover down as much as they can. And um, those same things will apply to movie theaters that have um, food in them, you know, like the disposable menus, the single serve items. Um, and movie theaters, you can't go to the movie theater, and this is a little bit complicated, okay? So they're keeping movie theaters to, like I said, 25% capacity. That's pretty much going to be everybody. Um, when you go to the movie theater, if you live with somebody, then you can sit next to them. If you don't live with somebody, like if you want to go to the movies with your friend or something, you have to have two seats in between you. So here's you, one, two, somebody else, okay? And then... Um, in between groups, there's going to be, um, each, you only can sit every other row. Okay. So you have to have an empty row in between people so that, um, you're not breathing on them. They're not breathing on you, stuff like that. Okay. So every other row, two seats apart. 
unless you live with each other and then of course you can sit next to each other because you already hang out with each other all the time but you guys need to sit two seats away from whoever the next person in the row is okay um so if your whole family wants to go that's fine you can all sit one two three four five and then there needs to be two blanks and then the strangers can sit down all right um libraries and museums are also going to be at 25 percent, and any like interactive exhibits are going to be closed so any hands-on things you're not going to be able to use um, you're only be able to look at things, all right, um, and religious services um, are still going to be open. They've been open this whole time. Um, those in the population who are most at risk, so elderly, um, people with pre-existing conditions like diabetes or heart problems or asthma, um, are all encouraged to stay home and not go, um, but if you do go, try to sit um, away from everybody else and um, everybody at the religious service needs to sit at least two seats away from um, anybody that's not in their household okay um what i think okay sports last one okay non-contact sports so anything that um you won't touch the other person like one-on-one -on -one. um so you know that knocks out things like basketball and football where they're contact or you're at least touching the other person and it has to be less than four okay so less than four people playing so that takes out things like baseball um not a lot of sports left i'm sure people can find something um but if you do want to you know obviously like i said you can still play with your family um pe members so if you want to you know play a game of one-on-one -on -one pickup with your brother that's fine your brother or sister um, but you can't, you know, get the whole neighborhood together for a game because that's way too many people and you will be contact. They'll touch each other and all of you will touch the ball. So you can't do that. Okay, so if you're going to play sports, it needs to be less than four people total and there can't be any contact between the people playing. Um, so, you know, things like cornhole or like shuffleboard. Not a lot of sports, guys. I'm trying to think of anything that would be less than four people with no contact. Um, tennis? Tennis counts. There you go. Okay. You can play tennis. Um, and golf. You can play golf. Um, but you have to, if you want to golf, you can't share the cart with somebody unless you live with them. So, there you go. All right. So, um, that was all of the guidelines. Um, if you need any more guidelines, of course, um... You're welcome to ask and I can walk you through, but those are the main ones that we're talking about um, that you're going to run into on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, um, HEB is reducing their purchasing limits. So they had placed purchasing limits on things that were like high um, necessities, things like toilet paper and paper towels and stuff like that. Um, you can now, they're raising those restrictions so it's not like limited to like one per guest or um, something. So I'm sure they're not just saying, you know, buy all you want, but they are re relaxing those a little bit. So it won't be like just one. Um, today in history, the Rodney King riots in LA of 1992. Um, so Rodney King was a young man in LA, um, who some police officers in LA were filmed, um, beating him up brutally and he ended up dying. Um, and it caused a big storm in LA because the LA police department was notoriously like corrupt um, and had a lot of um, racism and police brutality problems. But so like, you know, Rodney King's death was basically filmed, you know, caused by these police officers. Um, they were put on trial and today was the day where they were acquitted, which means the jury found them not guilty. Um, this made a lot of people very angry and it set off um, some race riots in LA um, and LA would struggle with um, that throughout the 90s um, it would be a big thing that everybody would um, deal with uh, they don't have as many riots obviously you know they're not rioting currently um, we like to think that things have gotten a lot better um, but yes the 90s was a rough time in LA um, with all of the um, issues with um, the police force and then the like multiple um, minorities that all lived and mixed together um, caused a lot of tension and blew up every once in a while. All right. Um, so I don't know if you guys saw this, but the federal government was just like, hey, UFOs are a thing that are real. 
Um, so that caused a lot of like, actually, no, it didn't because everybody's like really, you know, invested in talking about like Corona. Um, so everybody kind of like looked past it, but like, guys, um, of course, as we know, UFO does not mean aliens. UFO just means unidentified flying object. It could be literally anything. It just means, hey, that's something flying and I don't know what it is. It's a UFO. Um, so like I said, UFOs do not mean aliens. Um, they just mean somebody was flying something and the government didn't know who it was or what the, you know, thing that was flying was. Um, UFOs can be anything from, like, uh, lost, you know, like, like weather balloons or, um, drones that, you know, somebody, like, a kid is flying or something. They can be anything. Um, but the ones they released were pretty cool. I will link you. They released some videos of them and they look very, like, old school UFO-y with, like, saucers and, like, little legs and stuff. It's pretty cute. Um, but yeah, everybody's, like, saw that and we were all like, oh, hey, look at that. UFOs are real. Um, the fun activity that you guys are going to do today, I'm going to send out today, is a fun little activity. It's called Star Atlas, um, which is basically, it's like a, um, observatory that you can manipulate and look at the night sky and the planets and stuff, um, and you can do it at different times. What I think is fun is to, like, see what the night sky looked like, um, on the day you were born, um, because that's pretty cool and interesting, and then, you know, you can, like, look at all the um, constellations and planets and whatever that was going on while you were born. Um, and it'd be cool to, you know, know and see what you look like. All right. Um, your homework activity. Okay. So these past couple days, you've been talking about quotes, how to do good ones, how to do bad ones. Okay. That's because you guys are going to be for the rest of the week. Um, so this is going to be your activity for the rest of the week. Tomorrow you're going to do like a small little activity. Don't worry about it. Um, it won't take long. And it'll actually be pretty fun, I think. Um, but for the rest of you guys, you're going to do an activity the rest of the week where you're going to be writing a um, news report about, and here's your topic, and I'm going to put this in the, you know, class story as well. All right, your topic is technology usage by schools during the COVID outbreak. Now, obviously, you guys are going to be writing this um, based on a Hearn perspective, okay? So you're going to be, like, reporting on it. Um, and you can report um, based entirely in Hearn on your own, ex you know, examples. And you can just interview your family or call up your friends and ask them how, you know, what they've been using with technology. Or you could ask your teachers for some things. Or, you know, you can look at the Hearn website or the Hearn Dojo class story and see what um, Principal Henshin and Dr. Johnson and people like that have been posting about technology usage. Um... So you can, you know, you have all those resources to do research because you're actually going to, you know, like find out things about the story yourself. Okay. So you're going to say, you know, like, this is what people feel. This is what um, we've been doing. This is how it's been going. And this is going to be um, kind of, it's kind of going to fall into the category of like a pros con story. So um, what I expect is not just are you you know, informing me about how Hearn and you can even, you know, make it into other Texas schools if you want to find some more information on the TEA website or if you know people that are going to other schools and you want to ask them how it's going for them. So, you you know, you can do all of that as well. But this is going to be, like I said, what is called a almost like a pro-cons paper. So you're going to talk about how we're using the technology and what's going on. And then I want you to give me some... um kind of opinions. So you're going to interview, you know, different people and you can include, you know, some think it's going really well, uh, you know, one of my friends, but you would use their name, you know, age, blah, 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 said, da, 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 da. Um, others in the community are not so sure and, um, think that there have been a lot of, you know, um, difficulties and holdups. Uh, and then, you know, maybe give me another quote that backs that up. So you're going to give me both sides of the argument. I want the full thing. You're not trying to convince me. Um, you're just trying to inform me. And part of informing me is telling me what people think. Um, and what people think, you don't want to just give one side of the story because then your story is biased. I want you to give me both sides of the story. Um, if everybody thinks the same thing, you know, great. There's only one side, but very rarely does everybody think the same thing on one topic, okay? So, um, 
that's what you guys are going to do today. You're going to start and you can use your pyramid notes if you want to, you know, use them to kind of outline what your story is going to look like, you know, your five W's and your H up at the top, and then maybe some facts that are going to go in the article, and then maybe some quotes that you liked from people that you've been interviewing, um, and that'll help you because you're kind of going to write in that order. Um, if you need any assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out. That is your assignment for the day. Um, is to start collecting some information about it. You don't have to start writing it today, um, but I do want you to start collecting information, start asking people what they think, start writing down what you've been doing, um, you know, writing out all of your notes so that we can start putting it all into one story um, tomorrow and Friday, okay? Um, that is going to be it for today. Um, look at me, 15 minutes, so much faster. I'm getting better at this. Um, so that's the news for today and that's the assignment for today. Um, as you, you know, as you're taking the notes or as you're, you know, getting some quotes, just send me a picture of what you're doing so that I can see you're actually doing the work. Um, this is, since this is a multi-day project, I'm not going to ask you to like have, you know, specific things done. Um, I'm letting you guys kind of set your own goals, but I will say, um, I do want to see something by Friday. Um, and news stories are really short. They're going to be, you know a page max unless you're writing a feature article which we're not really I just want like a quick little news article so about a bit about a page um I will okay sorry I will be posting um a link to a YouTube video that I found that kind of walks through like how to write a news story and I thought it was really um it looked really good and interesting and I think it was a good idea maybe if you guys want to check it out so you can kind of see like how um you know, a good idea how you can run a news story and how to outline some things. Um, but like I said, you are using tech. Your story is about technology usage during the COVID-19 outbreak um, for schools, you know, so use Hearn, use Texas, use whatever. Um, but I want to see some research today. Okay. All right. I uh, love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Have a good day.